the things I love about re re uh, recording is that I love to to expose what it is that they're doing, right? So I'm walking, and uh, yeah. So he he sees me, sits down, takes out his wallet, right? And uh, open up his wallet because he has no money in his wallet, but he he took his money and put it in his hands. <laughs> in his hands, you know what I'm saying? Like this shit is so funny. <sighs> cults in our midst, destructive cults. So you gotta expose them. Okay. Uh, all right. Um, so as you guys just as you guys saw in the video, the the guy sitting down, all the guys sitting down. Uh, the basic, yeah, Cyrus, okay. <laughs> yeah, they've been on the war path, you know what I'm saying? Um, as soon as I start talking about the, 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 the sirens, anyway. Um, so yeah, so he sees me coming, okay? He takes his wallet out of his pocket, okay? And um, open it up, right? Now let me give you the significance of what they do with the wallet. There's two significance. Um, one, they had set me up to get robbed, okay? So they can take my wallet, all right? And, you know, they keep sending me some a message about that, you know. You know, one thing with psychopaths and sociopaths is that when they do things to you, they love, and, and narcissists, they love to let you know what exactly that is that they're doing to you. And because they do this in the realm of uh, psychology, and that's one aspect of it, as well as technology, but the technology no one wants to believe it exists but because this is a psychological program and they do this in the realm of psychology okay they think they can get away with it and so they constantly remind you of the things that they've done to you right and again uh it's just one of those things that you know it's like the, the, you know it's 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 like a constant reminder right so whatever trauma they put you through they have to constantly remind you of that trauma right that way you don't ever get over that trauma okay and this is what dark psychology is all about and you know when people participate in this stuff and like i said my targeting began way before i even realized okay before i, I was awakened to, to understand uh, and to see what was happening and uh first didn't fully understand it but my targeting began uh way sooner than i thought and it took me a while to realize this you know uh concretely because like I said, they will, uh, you know, do things to remind you of certain things that have happened in the past, you know, and and they do it constantly, you know, sometimes. Uh, and I guess they, they pick and choose exactly when and when and what time to reveal these things to you, right? Because when they feel like they have the upper hand, when they feel like they have, you know, almost everybody on board in terms of doing what it is that they're doing, then they start to reveal certain things to you because that's what psychopaths do and sociopaths and malignant narcissistic people do, you know? Um, so, if, you know, uh, so like for instance, they'll, they'll get Pam to target me if she says certain things, you know, or she'll act a certain way uh, towards me. You know, and they remind me of, you know, past prior relationships I've had, you know, in which uh, a certain individual do certain things and act a certain way or say certain things over and over again. And so it is a way of traumatizing you and keeping you traumatized over and over again. And then they want to feel like they're justified in targeting you. They feel like they're justified in doing what they're doing. But like I said, no one, not, at least most of these purposes don't even understand what took place. Don't even understand the manipulation, the manipulation, the deception, the lies, the deceit, all that shit. They don't even care. All they care about is the fact that they're on some mission. Whether it be some, you know, I always talk about God warrior. You're no fucking God warrior. You don't worry if it's Jesus, what have you. You know, you're fucking delusional. That's what you are. Okay? And you may call me delusional because I'm exposing what it is that y'all are doing. But I got the proof. Okay? This is what I have in my hand right here. This is technology I'm using to expose you. So anyway. Uh, yeah, so, you know, these are some of the things that they'll do. You know, like I said, this. you know, uh, last night I'm studying for my test and it's like... In a constant remote neural monitoring, you know. 
because what they feel is that, uh, you know, whatever it is that you try to achieve in life, they're going to take it away from you. Whatever it is that you try to do or want, they're going to take it away from you. So it's a way of, 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 of destroying you and killing your, your drive to achieve anything because you know that they're going to do whatever they're going to do to try to prevent you or take whatever it is away from you. Right. So it is meant to give you a feeling of hopelessness. But I, I don't have a feeling of hopelessness. OK. All right. So, what you know, uh, like I always say, you know, you'll take a step back or even two steps back. But as long as you keep pushing forward, you keep taking a step forward at a time. Eventually, you'll get to where, you where you know, you'll get to unless they do something drastic that prevents you from, from getting that, from doing that. OK. And again, that would not be on you. That would be on them. All right. So they have not caused any. Uh, uh, internal hopelessness within me. They have not uh, uh, caused any uh, internal helplessness within me. They have not caused any sort of um, depressive state within me uh, because I know everything that's being done is being done on the outside. It's not within me. And so this is why I do what I do. This is why, like I said, I continue to um, to record and, you know, they don't like it, so what? Don't give a fuck. Uh, I want to keep recording and exposing it. And so, again, you know, so one of the things also, one of the things that they try to do, too, is to try to, what I've noticed is that, particularly when it comes to Pam and her targeting me, how they try to, uh, uh, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, how they try to give her excuses, right? Uh, or, or try to um, uh, uh, alleviate the harm that she's done, that she's doing to me. Okay. Uh, for, let me give you an example. For example, you know, when I, re, when I remember, I don't need to pre pretend that I forget things. Okay. I don't need to do that. Okay. I'm, I, I'm being me who I am. I don't need to pretend to be anybody or pretend to do this and that. Okay. When I forget things, I forget things. Okay. And I, like I said, I have proof of my short term memory, uh, you know the effect of what it is doing has an effect on my short term, how short term memory, how it, how it negatively affect that, and they're constantly trying to test that, constantly trying to test that. Now again, short term memory doesn't mean because you know you say uh, I give you uh, I give you five numbers, and I'll say three things, and you know uh, five minutes later you come back and ask me those things. Okay. Because you know what? You can give me, say, five things. I'll say 10 things to me and come back two hours later, right? And I don't remember it. You can say it to me and then come back five minutes later, I remember it. So, again, what it is that they're trying to do is justify what it is that they're doing by trying to say, well, you know, your short-term memory is only affected if you, if you don't remember things within a certain time limit, which is bullshit. Okay? And, again, I keep saying, us as black people, we have to understand what is happening okay and the people that are making these rules or setting these guidelines do not have our best interests of heart okay even you t uh, who was a ti who is non-black whether you're white asian hispanic what have you okay remember i'm speaking from a black perspective uh so you know it is one of the the, the things that they do to alleviate themselves from any responsibility any accountability okay so let me give you an example. So uh, this morning, Pam called me. I was doing my test. She calls me. She's like, her friend is in the hospital. But I said to her, you know, I'm doing my test or what have you, and um, I'll call you back. She, she's, like, she's like, call me back later when you have time. So I said, okay, fine. You know, finished my test, and I, oh, shit, I forgot to, I forgot to upload my um, thing. See, you know, anyway. So I called her after, when I was picking up my daughter. And she's like, hey, what is it? What what happened? Something happened? Something happened? This and that? And I'm like, uh, no, uh, you know. Because she was she sounded so distressed this morning about her friend being in the hospital. Unless she was lying. You know what I'm saying? She could very well be lying because, you know, that's what she does, right? When she, whenever she wants to go hang out, what have you, uh, she lied to me. Regardless of, of despite whatever I tell her. You know, the fact that I have to go home, what have you. You know, and so she acted, she acted like if she don't remember. So I'm like, whatever. I said, you know what? I didn't push it. You know what I'm saying? I did not push it because I know exactly what it is that they're doing. You know, they're, they're not fooling me. 
Okay, because I know exactly what it is that they're doing. And so, uh, you know, so I was just like, okay, you know what, whatever. I didn't, I didn't push the issue, what have you. And, you know, the kids, again, they're not in the Boys and Girls uh, Club program. I've done everything she asked me to do. You know, and again, they end up falling on my shoulders. Okay? Now, instead of her doing this in the beginning of school, she was busy going here, talking to this person, talking to that person. You know, the kids' report cards are terrible. Terrible. When I tell you, when I say terrible, terrible. Okay? Terrible. She has no concern of the kids' schoolwork. None whatsoever about the education. Unless somebody might have mentioned it, brings up in conversation, then she, you know, but none whatsoever. You know, the, was it yesterday, yesterday uh, not yesterday, the day before, I literally had to, you know, keep asking her, hey, Ethan needs help with his work. I said, I'm helping Alyssa do her homework. Ethan needs help with his work. Help him. She goes over to Ethan, asks him what he needs, walks away. What did she do? I went to check on her, on her phone, on her phone. So I told Ethan, I said, "Go get your mother." And I'm coming. I'm coming. I'm, so I'm like Pamela. He needs help. He's asking you. You know, it's it's the fact that, as she said, she she loved to say, how, oh, "Oh, I love my kids, and I'm doing everything for my kids." No, no, you don't love your kids. You don't love your kids. You have kids, so now you 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 have to be. Uh, 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 somewhat of a parent because you know you don't want to look bad to your friends and your family okay but when it comes to other things because she's always saying well you know I put a roof over the head and I put feet up that's because you just that's what you're supposed to do you're an adult if I wasn't going through what I was going through I'd be doing the same thing I I never complained when I was working before I never complained about all that stuff because that's what you're supposed to do as an adult you know you're not winning any special award for being an adult or for being a, 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 a parent, right? And this is the problem when you have women who want to have kids and then the reality when they have kids and they're like, oh, it's a lot of work, you know? I, I got to, you know, I want to have fun. I want to go here. I want to go here. I want to go there. You know, like I told her the other day, I said, you know, you have these clothes in the living room from the laundry, two weeks now, all over the living room. You started falling, then what you do? You get up, you go into your room, you watch videos, you talk on your phone, you forget about it. You left them, you, she leaves the shit there. You hear that banging? Okay. Yeah, this been happening all, all morning. Okay? The same thing when I'm at, at my house with my neighbor upstairs. This is what they're doing now because they, uh, I think they're doing uh, construction uh, in the next apartment. But this isn't like a, a, a you know, they hammer and nails or anything like that. This is like, you know, banging on the wall literally with their hands okay so yeah so anyway as i was saying right so i'm like hey you know you have this long these laundries that are all on the floor and these are clean laundry all on the floor and this stuff. oh you know there's only so much time of the day and the weekend but let her friends say hey you know what come let's go hang out like just like uh yesterday she's like um oh i got invited to to, to uh, uh uh somewhere on friday and this and that like i'm supposed to be i'm like okay yeah no you know if you would clean up your home and keep it clean, you can go over the hell you want to go. You know what I'm saying? I mean, you go over the hell you want to go now, which she's doing, but she don't. She doesn't clean. And I keep telling her, this is not a good environment for the kids because, again, when I'm here, I have to clean up all the time. I'm, my back hurts. I'm constantly cleaning, constantly injuring my back. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, that. Right. <laughs> yeah, that they moved to the car honking. And, um, you know, yeah, it's just, I mean, it's just ridiculous. Really, really, it really is. You know, and it's like, I got told, I said, you know, you know, it's it's a tough situation. It, it, it really is. And, you know, as a TI, you know, we have to do the best that we can, uh, despite of what's happening. But some of us, you know, this, this has affected us in ways that, you know, that, that, you know, kind of leaves you um in a in a in a in a decrepit state you know and 
you know, you can't even turn to the uh, law enforcement because law enforcement is a big part of it. Law enforcement is, is, is the one who is given these uh, perpetrators, the civilian perpetrators, information about you and I, and they're the ones that are giving them devices to surveil us and, and um, you know, listen to our conversations on our devices. You hear the call, Lincoln? Let's let you guys know that this is not, that, that's not coincidental, okay? So, and again, they left the show because they figured, well, you know, people going to look at this and going to be like, oh, it's just call, Lincoln. Nobody's going to believe him. It's just call, Lincoln. But I want you to go rewind this and watch it again and just listen to specific words that I say and when they do their car honking, okay? And just jot those down. Uh, so anyway, um, you know, the, uh, yeah, so it's like, it's, it's ridiculous. You know, you can't go to law enforcement because law enforcement is a big part of it, okay? And, 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 and the reason why they do this, and particularly with those who are in law enforcement involved in this, is because... If you're being targeted by law enforcement, you're not going to go to them. Why would you? How could you? You know what I'm saying? It's automatically you're not going to go when you realize that they're the one that's targeting you and, and they're the one that's getting the, the civilian population uh, to participate in your targeting. All right? So where does that leave you? Where does that leave you? Uh, and, and, and where does that... Uh, and actually say, well, and who can you turn to? I've called the ACLU, all these civil rights uh, places. They don't help you. They don't help you because, again, they're not willing to invest the time, the effort, the money in helping you, right? Because maybe they feel that there's nothing they can do. Maybe they feel they're going to pick against the government, so, it, you know, it's, it's nothing you can do. Or maybe these organizations infiltrated uh, maybe these perks have infiltrated their organization, and it's possible. You look at um, uh, the Church of Scientology, okay, and how they infiltrated the IRS and and all this stuff. It's a very very fascinating story. You guys got to read it. As a matter of fact, look, go to A and E and and watch Leah Remini um, series, uh, the Church of Scientology, okay, in which she exposed her and Mike Richter exposed a lot of things that the church were doing. And so this is what these are, whether they're Catholic, whether they're Baptist, what have you, you know, they, these are cults. These these are cults. And, you know, in the beginning of the video, you hear me say uh, destructive cults in our midst. And this this is not new. This is for those of us who don't know history. But for me, this is not new. This is this has been happening in the 70s, in the 80, early 80s, okay, until they went on the ground. But they didn't go on the ground and remain silent. They were planning. They were plotting. Okay. Infiltrating organizations, infiltrating society, to where they can do this to anybody, and, and I feel they can get away with it, but they can't. I'm not going to let them. It's not going to happen. Not while I'm alive. Okay, so, you know, so I got to say. Uh, oh, one more thing. Um, so this morning, uh, I'm my way over here. You know, I have to get my medication from, from Dwayne Reed. So what it is that they'll do is that they will try to um, do things to prevent you from getting medication, stuff like that. Uh, so every time, you know, every month I get medication from Dwayne Reed. And every time I get on the bus, get off the bus, they always have people standing in front of Dwayne Reed targeting me and stuff like that. Um, and this, I'm sorry, not Dwayne Reed, um, Walgreens, Walgreens on church in Utica. Always, always perps there, you know, and it's and and to get the faculty, yeah, Cyrus, yeah, because I'm calling out, I'm calling out exactly who, you know, and what is that they do, and the uh, fa the faculties in the pharmacy there, perps, all perps, every last single one of them, all right. So if you're a TI and you live in Brooklyn. Just understand when you go to that Walgreens that you're going to be targeted. I mean, you're going to be targeted regardless, but their perps. Okay. And so when they're constantly trying to um, prevent you from getting your medication and stuff like that, it is because they without they know that if you don't take these medications, that you'll be worse off. And this is exactly what they want. This is what is called slow kill. Right. How, how you invisibly kill somebody over time. Right. And this is what they're what they have been engaging 
for a very long time. But guess what? Like I said, I'm going to expose it because it's not going to happen. All right, so here, as I say, a very long time, you hear the, the car honking, all right? So I said, this, like I said, we watch this and listen to the, the car honking, listen to the words that I'm saying, and that will give you an indicator. So that you'll know, right, how it is that they do certain things. Okay, so I'll see you guys in the next video.